somebody in there? Oh my god. Oh, get 911 here right away, man. I'm phoning 911. Okay, yeah. Don't move, buddy. We couldn't get through to 911. And some guy came up and knocked on the door and he said, Hey, I think this tree's about to fall. We have a tree house. After the storm, coping with the blackout and the cleanup. CBC News Vancouver with Andrew Chang. Good evening. Those were the scenes across the Lower Mainland this weekend as a powerful storm pummeled our city. There wasn't quite as much rain as people were expecting, but that wind, much stronger than expected, ripping trees right out of the ground and knocking out power for half a million people. But today, the cleanup is underway, and it is a process that the city says could take weeks, not days. Richard Zussman is here with us, and Richard, I have been watching and listening to you out in the thick of the storm all weekend. What's the latest? Andrew, this is the storm that people here in Metro Vancouver will be talking about for a long time. The damage has been hard to miss. Trees piled up on roads, in some cases ripped from sidewalks, homes damaged, cars damaged. All of that has had its costs. Adrian Langwa, who had his vehicle crushed in the storm, and two days later, he still can't go to work. Pretty much that's what I'm up to. I need to be working right now, but uh, I'm not. I don't know what else it can do to me. Maybe there might be a sinkhole forming in the back alley. I don't know. <laughs> and all this damage has its cost. ICBC still doesn't have any solid numbers yet on how many cars like Langwa's were destroyed in the storm. Not only were cars destroyed by falling trees, but traffic lights were without power. That caused problems. There were many instances of people that didn't treat them like four-way stops, which caused some crashes. Uh, those with damage either from a crash or from being crashed on by a tree are being asked to call and start a claim with ICBC. There hasn't been a a lot of injuries reported yet from ICBC. They say that's a good thing, but even so, there's been enough to keep adjusters busy. We haven't totaled up the cost yet. Obviously, we're getting a huge volume of calls coming in, more than 3,500 calls at the weekend, uh, hundreds coming in to ICBC.com. Without a doubt, we'll be looking at hundreds of thousands of dollars of claims, um, just given the extent of damage. And Right, so insurance companies clearly going to be on the hook for a lot of money. Municipalities also on the hook for a lot of money with all the damage that, that's out there. How bad is it going to be? Hey Andrew, you see some of those crews up there. That costs money as well. A lot of factors at play at figuring out all the costs, and that takes time. At this point, the actual damage, broken trees, smashed sidewalk, other tree-related damage, it's hard to assess how much it's all going to cost. There's also the cost of cleaning up, and the city of Vancouver decided to keep its call center open for 35 straight hours. That's going to cost in manpower, receiving 1,800 storm-related calls and 675 tree requests. So uh, for now, uh, it's a lot of cleanup that needs to take place. Uh, and just on the cost side, we haven't yet uh, got an estimate of any of the costs related to the city. Uh, just starting to calculate those costs, so uh, that'll be in the days ahead. And it's not just Vancouver, it's municipalities across the Lower Mainland, bad in Surrey as well. On Saturday at the peak of the storm, 100 different calls for trees down. Today, more than 30 trees down across Surrey because of the big rains out there. Crews working through the day and night to get everything cleaned up. It's the cost of resources and equipment, um, being out on the roads, uh, cleaning up the trees, uh, cost of external resources, external external contractors, you know, equipment that we may not have with the city. And one thing, Andrew, yeah. that may not be able to be repaired is the reputation for BC Hydro. During the peak of the storm on Saturday, there were more than 500,000 homes without power, and the website crashed. Right. Now the company is saying it's sorry, but there has been a huge outcry online of frustration from people. They couldn't figure out how long it was going to take to get things fixed. Then the secondary site went down. Again, they couldn't figure out what areas were in trouble. And the social media reaction on Twitter, BC Hydro, very slow to get out on Twitter to let people know where there were problems. This is something, Andrew, not just the damage, but the reaction that we're going to be talking about for a long, long time. Yeah, and in the middle of a crisis, in the middle of an emergency, that's the last thing you want to go down, right? That, that sort of main <laughs> conduit of information where people are actually finding out one way or the other, whether they're their homes are going to have power. Right and there now. were also problems getting in touch with 911. So that yeah. was concerning to people right. too. So a lot of problems with communication.
conversations and you know Mayor Gregor Robertson said it today we are in a climate where there are going to be a lot of extreme weather issues going forward in Metro Vancouver and this is just one example of one we may see even more frequently than we have. All right thanks a lot Richard. You're welcome. Now uh, the sheer destructive force of the storm that was one thing right but if you're in the business of food during those power outages, you had a whole other problem on your hands. Grocery stores and restaurants, they had to deal with food spoiling, which is a devastating thing if your whole inventory is wiped out. Now, the Surrey night market had its own hardships to deal with, and that is where we find our south of the Fraser reporter, Jesse Johnston. And Jesse, I can see behind you quite the scene out there. Yeah, Andrew, if you take a look, you can see just how powerful that storm was. And believe it or not, there's actually been a substantial amount of cleanup work that has been done here already. So you can imagine what this looked like shortly after that storm hit, picking up tents, scattering them all over this lot. And now that's left organizers and vendors to come by and pick up the pieces. It's hard to put a dollar figure on the damage here, but when the numbers are all added up, the total will be staggering. The Surrey night market was supposed to be open for three more weekends, but with devastation like this, it has to be closed for the season. Looks like a war zone. Everything was literally brought down, so it's, it's total destruction. Organizers are not insured for a weather event like this. Neither are many of the vendors here. We all feel sad for the vendors because uh, they were all small businesses. They were trying out, and uh, I mean, we had asked them all to get insurance right up front, but sometimes people don't. Restaurants were also hit hard by the outage. GJ's Kitchen and Catering opened in Surrey two months ago. They went more than 48 hours without power, forcing them to throw away thousands of dollars worth of food and close their doors on a busy weekend. On Saturday there was an Indian festival and a lot of people came in to have food and have a nice time with some sweets, but we couldn't serve them because uh, uh, it was all dark. Sati remains positive, even though last weekend has left him in a deep financial hole. Back at the Surrey night market, organizers share his outlook. They say they'll lean on the community for support and eventually return with a bang. We definitely will be back next year. That I can guarantee right now. Wow, Jesse. So, you know, you were mentioning just a moment ago how what we see behind you is, is a slightly cleaned up version of, of what was actually there. How long until the, the real cleanup gets underway? Well, that's going to be a big project. Uh, there's a plumbing system that they brought in here so that vendors could have water. That's been devastated. That's going to have to be rebuilt. Uh, the vendors have come through and they've been able to pick up some of their supplies and take them away with them. But you still have to get all the tents out of here. And then there's all the other items that are just strewn about this site. What's heartening here, though, is lots of people have called the Surrey Night Market organizers and said, hey, is there anything we can do to help? And they said uh, they're trying to organize some volunteers here now to uh, try and get some sort of cleanup effort going in the next few days. If that's something that you're willing to help out with, the Surrey Night Market, I'm sure, would love to hear from you. Andrew? Okay, thanks a lot, Jesse. Jesse Johnston live tonight from what is left of the Surrey Night Market, one of the big casualties of the storm. Now, after a power outage, uh, people may be worried about whether the food in their fridges are still safe to eat. So the BC Centre for Disease Control says there are a few things that you should keep in mind. If your home has been without power uh, for more than four hours, know this, a fully stocked freezer will keep food frozen for up to two days. But if your freezer is only half full, it will only keep food frozen for around 24 hours. The real test is if the food is still frozen, uh, that's a good thing. If it has thawed, then you got to toss it out. In the fridge, it's best to toss out perishable foods like meat and dairy products. And uh, one more thing, they say there's a rule of thumb. If the food temperature is above 4 degrees Celsius, then you should throw it out. Now, uh, back on the, the cleanup front, crews are still working to clear away downed trees right across Metro Vancouver. And we've just heard this afternoon from the Vancouver Park Board that those strong winds broke or uprooted 500 park trees citywide. And then add on top of all that, all the trees lining the streets and all those trees on private property that were damaged. And that's a lot. Tina Lovegreen has that part of the story. It's all the buzz around town. A tree tied up rush hour traffic here at Victoria at 54th. It was one of the many blown down on Saturday. City and hydro crews were on the scene prioritizing those that posed the most immediate danger. 
That left homeowners scrambling to find private companies to help clean up their yards. I'm tired. <laughs> it's Monday and we work Saturday, Sunday, so we're, we're, me and Ray are going to be doing 12 days in a row, but, um, but we're happy to do it. Those in the business say they can't remember an August like this and can barely keep up with demand. Basically right now it's just getting the trees to the ground at least and then we clean up the mess later once we've dealt with all the other emergency calls. And the calls keep on coming. Next stop, Burnaby. It's an endless parade of addresses, all dealing with unwanted woods. They may be used for um, community gardens and often have been donated to community gardens. Um, there are also certain locations in the city, such as Sunset, where they are left out and made available for the public to use if, uh, if they have a need for wood chips. It was in 2006 that Stanley Park was devastated as a storm swept through, causing a massive blowdown of trees. And the park had to be closed again this weekend out of fear the massive trees would come down in the wind. The majority of trees and branches that had fallen down have now been pushed to the side of the road and the park is open now. Even though it's not ideal conditions, people still came out to explore. Um, yeah, we came out, I guess, on a rainy day, but I love it. You do nothing against the weather. You have to take to work with it, to be with it. Therefore, you have an umbrella, I have a, a cap. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, we're adventurers, so at heart. The cleanup will go on for days. It will take weeks to tally the cost, but it has been a windfall for cleanup crews. <laughs> Tina Lovegreen, CBC News, Vancouver. And another update on uh, this part of the story for you. A woman was hit by a tree in North Surrey on Saturday, walking near 100th Avenue and 148th Street. The latest info that we have is that she is still in critical condition in hospital, but uh, we'll keep monitoring that situation for you and bring you those updates. Now, one of the big issues over the weekend was how hard it was to get updates on the power outages. As you heard Richard mention earlier, the BC Hydro website was down right in the middle of the crisis, which is a huge problem. So a little later in the program, I'll have a sit down interview with the head of BC Hydro, Jessica McDonald, that's the CEO herself, to get some answers about where the response fell short and what they're going to change for the future. That's coming a little later. Uh, we are going to bring Amy Bell into the conversation to talk about what's ahead in weather. But first, let me just say we have been getting flooded with photos and videos from people showing what they have been having to deal with out there. And we do want you to send us your photos, too. So give us a sense of what the past 48 hours have been like where you live in your neighborhood. You can find me on Twitter. I'm at Andrew Chang CBC, and a little later in the program, we'll showcase some of what people have sent in our way.